So just a few more seconds now, about 30 seconds, and we'll get started. Oh yes, the antennas have already started moving. I, I know you can't see the monitor down here, but uh, they actually started pointing out over the river automatically. So they're waiting for the satellite to come up over the horizon. All right, and you can see on the polar display, it uh, just popped up. So I'll go ahead and try and make contact. NA1SS, NA1SS, this is W9OG. Alright, NA1SS from W9OG. Yes, you're a bit down in the noise, but we did copy that, and we do understand that you're copying us. Uh, so uh, we'll give it another try here. I just wanted to say good morning, at least this morning here for us, and uh, welcome to the Evansville Museum of Arts, History, and Sciences in the Evansville Bay School. They would like to say hello. Okay, that was loud and clear. It's uh, great to be talking to the Evansville Bay School today, and uh, I'm ready for the questions if you are. Uh, we're ready. Here's the first question. What time zone do you go by when you're in space? Over. Question number two. Does it smell different in space? Over. up there in space. Over. Over. Activities are difficult in microgravity, but simple in Earth's gravity. Over. transition from Earth's gravity to microgravity. Over. Well, the first few days, I actually felt pretty sick to my stomach because everything inside your body is floating and it's not used to that. So, I had a headache, my stomach felt kind of upset, and I was a little bit disoriented. But then, after the first three or four days, I felt absolutely great, and it is so fun to work and live in zero gravity. Over. Alright, next question. How hard is it to digest food on the space station? Over. part about being an astronaut. Over. You know, this job is so great. There's, it's, hard, it's tough to say there's a hard part, but I'm away from my family. We're pretty isolated up here. I'd say that's probably the hardest part. And then in training, it's, just, it's a lot of work. We're training in so many different areas. We have to learn the Russian language. Uh, we got to work all around the world, so a lot of travel, but it's all fun. It's all fun. So even the difficult stuff is a lot of fun. Over. Does life on the ISS get lonely? Over. 
I've got five crewmates up here that are fantastic, and uh, we really get along great. And additionally, I can email, I can even call my family on the weekends. So I stay pretty good in touch. I was in the Navy for uh, 12 years, and it's a lot more lonely when you're out at sea than it is up here. Over. What was most surprising or unexpected the first time you went into space? Over. Oh, uh, that's, that's an easy one. Uh, I would say the most surprising was looking out the window in my spacecraft just after we launched when we were first in orbit and just looking at the Earth. I knew it was going to be beautiful, but I had no idea how gorgeous it would be. The blue of the atmosphere and the oceans right up against the blackness of space. I will never for the rest of my life forget that first picture outside. Over. How has your outlook on life changed by being in space? Over. Oh, I'm not sure it's changed too much, other than what really has changed is our Earth is really small. I used to think Earth was huge, takes forever to fly from continent to continent, but we lap the Earth once every 90 minutes. And uh, I've seen every continent, most countries, and uh, you know, it's a small place. We need to take care of it. Over. Could everyday civilians become accustomed to space travel? Over. Uh, no doubt about it. I think, uh, barring a few maybe medical issues, uh, it would be tough, I think, if you had heart problems to come up here. But other than that, I think anybody could come up here, and after about a week, they would be adapted. And uh, I look forward to seeing that in the future. I think a lot more people are going to be flying into space in the next couple of years. Over. Which of your research projects has been the most, has the most potential? Over. I've only been up here for three months, so what I've been working on, I don't think is going to change our lives on Earth. But uh, some of my favorite stuff, I've been working on flame research to see how fire burns in space, how different fuels behave. And I think that'll help us when we build spacecraft to go into deep space. And then another one that's really interesting to me is called a capillary flow experiment. And water and all liquids behave really weird at zero G. And this one's uh, run by a German company. And I've really, I really enjoyed watching this. They're actually moving fluid around without any mechanical devices, just using capillary flow. It's really neat to see that. Over. How long do you stay up there? Over. Over. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I've been up here three months, and i got about two and a half to go. So in total, I'll be up here 166 days. And uh, but I'll tell you, I'm going to miss it when I leave. Over. What training did you do to become an astronaut? Over. Well, I think that starts all the way back in school. I always loved engineering and science and math uh, for the most part, especially from high school on. And so I wanted to become an engineer, and I love aviation, so I wanted to become a Navy pilot, which I did, and uh, flew aircraft for 12 years. And then when I got to NASA, that's the, the real astronaut training begins. Russian language, robotic arm training, spacewalk training, uh, you name it, we basically did it. Over. How do you go to the bathroom in space? Over. Ah, uh, that's such a great question. I don't think we have enough time on the damn to go into all the details. But, if you can imagine going to the bathroom and turning off gravity, it would become a big bath very, very quickly. So we actually have a machine, the Russians built it, and uh, it's our space toilet, and it's actually just like a, uh, a pretty gentle vacuum cleaner, and it uses suction to move everything away from us. And once you get used to it, it's actually not that bad. In some, in some ways, it's a little bit more enjoyable than it's on Earth, so it's, it's uh, overall pretty good system. Over. Okay, we have one last question. Go ahead. What is your favorite food? Over. Uh, is that in space or on Earth? Uh, right now, I'm missing pizza, so I would love to have a pizza. But my favorite food up here has got to be, uh, we have this thing called chocolate pudding dessert, and uh, anytime we open a new food container, I run right for the chocolate pudding thing. And the interesting thing is, I really didn't like it on Earth, but up here I absolutely love that dessert. Over. All right, thank you, Astronaut Wiseman. We're about to lose you down in the noise. We just want to thank you once again. Uh, thank you very much for the contact. We very much appreciate it. And have an enjoyable uh, rest of your time on the space station. Good, Good luck. NA1SS from W9OG. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. He can't hear you, but... <laughs> Can we flip back to day school now? Oh, sorry, I was trying to get no, that's really fine. That's great. Hello, day school. How did you like that? Okay, okay, day school. I guess that.
concludes our contact.